So episode five is one that's, you know, really important to us. It depicts Darby's year at boarding school. I think we just kind of wanted to keep threading the needle on her history. Like, how yeah. does a person get to right. be where they are at the beginning of the show. We deal with Darby's entire life before 23 right. in a couple of minutes at the beginning of episode one. And it's like a lovely reminder that like that doesn't go away. You didn't That's start right. from scratch right. at the pilot right. episode of right. your twenties. We came up with this backstory, which was a huge thing that happened to Darby in her youth until she kind of can break that apart and look at that she actually can't do the back half of the season i think especially being able to pay off carbuckety from the pilot which was very the most important exactly. i like how magnus is mirrored by cool guy yeah. he's the the teenage version of magnus yeah. you're really fucking shiny you're amazing you know yeah. and you see how you can get sucked into that at any yeah. age oh hey I just found out that I have cancer. I'm not very good at imagining things, so I take a lot of stories from people I know, from things that have happened to me. This fake cancer subplot is a story that happened to my wife. And something like the John Mayer song specifically is a funny thing where that was the song that my wife actually listened to when she was going through the whole situation. And imagining her just like thinking that was the deepest song in the world mm. and that that was the thing that got her through it. Was it. her life raft? Yeah. Why do you think you did it? God, I know, I, I don't know. Just, um like being a dumb high schooler, I guess. I know, but the thing is, Darby, that a lot of kids get broken up with, but they don't go around telling people they had cancer. Obviously having this framing device where we have present day Darby and she's in therapy and she's kind of dissecting this stuff. And I think kind of fun to see how much she's trying to underplay it. Right, you know, right. seeing the juxtaposition of how intense it was for her at the time, and then sitting in an office where she's going like, I mean, it was like small selling. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's probably deal. not still bothering me to this day. Yeah, and I think by that same token, like being able to show Darby learning how to be in therapy. Right. Real life therapy couch. <laughs> I'm not actually supposed to lay down, right? Whatever makes you feel comfortable. So do I just start talking or? You know, I just remember in the beginning of therapy, it's like, I didn't dig deep at all because mm. I was still wanted the therapist to like me, yeah. which is like insane. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yo, you're paying them to like tell them like your deepest, darkest yeah. shit. And if you're like holding back to be like, yeah, well, you know, I've had some uh, girlfriends. That's and, why I stopped you know, going to therapy because right, I just, I couldn't do it. I was right. too embarrassed <laughs> about the things I wanted like, to say. I want to do bits yeah. with you. That's really <laughs> yeah, totally. what I'm here for. Exactly. Sometimes we think we're chasing one thing, we're actually chasing another. Between now and next week, I want you to reflect on what it is that makes you feel like you don't deserve to be loved. What are you doing? Let's go.